Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Galetz, and I'm an industry education coordinator working with the Regina District Industry Education Council and SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Spencer Vandenberg, who's a hunting and fishing guide. Spencer is a former student of mine at Rosetown Central High School, and I remember how clear he was in his career goals uh, of becoming a hunting guide. He serves as an excellent example of how following the high five principles of career development can lead to a rewarding career. Uh, he followed his heart, he's kept learning, and uh, accesses his allies in the process. Those are three of the five high five principles that I think uh, that you follow pretty closely. So just a reminder before we begin, the session is being recorded and will appear on the Regina, Regina District Industry Education Council YouTube channel for you to, or others to view in the future. We'd also like to request that any students who watch this uh, session go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found at the top of the page. Uh, that would help us a lot if you could do that survey and it would get your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. So again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. Um, I'll turn it over to Spencer now, so take it away. All right, thanks, Kevin. Um, so I'm here, Spencer Vandenberg, fishing and hunting guide. I've spent, this be about my fifth year doing it, I believe. And yeah, I was in high school and decided that, I mean, school wasn't really my favorite thing, but I still did everything. But hunting and fishing was a passion. That's all I spent time thinking about when I was at school. That's what I wanted to do. And just followed the dream and the passion. And here I am today doing exactly what I love and what I want to do. So we'll get right into this. These are some of the outfitters I worked for. Uh, when I was in high school, I started out with Prairie Sky Outfitters. They're right here at Rosetown. So when I was in high school, we had a grade 12 trip. And it was a three-day trip. I kind of decided, you know what? I was like, I didn't really want to go on this three-day trip. I thought I had three days off to go hunting. And I went for three days hunting with Prairie Sky Outfitters just north of Rosetown there. And I started helping them out. And ever since that, I, boom, right there. I've been started guiding with them, working with them, hunted with them a lot. And from there, I started meeting other people through the industry. Some of the guys I worked with at Wollaston. Or sorry, some of the people I worked with at Rosetown at the Prairie Sky Outfitters had some friends that were guiding at Wollaston. Got to meet them, got talking about it because I always wanted to guide fishing. That was my plan straight out of from gra graduating from high school. Couldn't quite make that happen just for the timing because at the end of June you're graduating and every camp starts at the beginning of June. So coming right out of high school, it's kind of tough to get into some of those lodges just because of the timing wise. But Still chased it, went hard at it, and the next season after that, I decided to go up to the fishing lodges and work there, and just kind of getting in, being in the industry. I, at Wollaston, I met another guy there who guided cougar hunts, and I always thought that was the coolest thing. Had to get into that, so talked to him, and he wasn't able to go back that next season, talked to the Byron, Stuart, who works there, and it's, he's like, it's totally different from everything else. It's going to be a total change, and I was like, I'm up for the challenge, and got out there, and it was, it's so different from everything else, but I'm so glad I've been doing that. It's, it's, it's wild out there. It's, you're in the mountains, you're with dogs, with cougars. It's crazy. And then the whole deer and bears, just one of my buddies through the hunting I've done, got to know him a little bit there, Anthony Springer, and asked me if I'd come guide deer for him the one season. It was a last minute thing. And he just knew who I was, needed a hand and got got me out there probably within three days before the season started it was just kind of last minute thing and from there did that and the next season did bears with them and just been kind of climbing and running around out there and meeting new people and working for different outfitters and i'm at some of the highest end lodges there are like for prey sky walston wheat king and tnt they're the top of the line best outfitters you could work for in this province and in this country so my job description it's a lot of time spent where you're at. So when you go into these camps, you're going to spend, could be a month, could be two, three months at a time at these camps. And everyone thinks, you know, you're just going to be out there fishing, hunting every single day. But you spend a lot of time in your first couple of years. I mean, in camp, you're going to be working lots of stuff. You have your before the season starts, lots of, 
you know, getting camps ready, working on that type of stuff. And it's, it's a fun, fun lifestyle. It can be tough at times because you're gone a long time. You've got weather. There's lots of stuff that can affect you out there. Um, but you do get to meet a lot of, a lot of people. You have to be a people person and you're dealing with different types of people's attitudes. You have guys that have, you know, they work in these cities in the States, a lot of American clients, and they are just, they just got done work and they're coming out there and they're still got their work. They're grumpy. They're, they're living life and it's not easy. And you got to kind of get them, you know, relaxed, enjoying their trip. Cause they only have a week or four days out there with your three days and you just got to, they get relaxed, hang out with them, get things going. And they really enjoy that by the end of their, by the end of their trip. And then you have a little bit of the knowledge too. So in the job description, as years go on, you kind of learn, well, you learn a lot, actually. I always thought, oh, I know everything about bird hunting, everything about fishing, but got into it and you don't know anything. Once you're out there, you have no idea, like you don't know a thing. So as you start to grow and you learn every year after year after year about the game you're pursuing, the from fishing, hunting, all that there's it's amazing what you don't know and i think you can do that with any job you can go out there and keep your mindset that if i you know there's always something to learn you'll never know it all you're dealing with environments weather wildlife like mother nature you're playing with a game that's you can keep learning from and <laughs> never always know it all but it's cool to keep learning the skills and traits this is kind of one where it depends on the person you are but a lot of the skills I would say come from starting out with the job. Like, of course I had lots of love to hunt and fish when I was in high school and young and ever since I can remember, but looking back now, I didn't know anything. So once I got into it and you just start to learn the skills, the people that have been there for 10 years, guiding and hunting and fishing, you learn from those guys. Those are the guys who know what's going on out there. It's, one of those things where if you hang out with the people who are better at it than you or, you know, really good higher up, that's where you learn. That's where you climb up the ladder and learn how to be just as good or, you know, better as those people. And a lot of the, I mean, personality is so huge, outgoing people, person, I mean, laughing, keeping the comedy going. You're going to meet lots of people that are the easiest people you've ever guided. You don't ever really remember those people. It's those tough days, those tough days, grinds that with those people those clients that maybe your personality doesn't mix but you got to kind of set that aside and keep that person happy because it's their couple days out there you're out there the whole season and it's not your trip it's not about you but it's about making their trip something they'll always remember so those tough guys and even some of the odd guys you get those are the ones I always remember because they're tough to tough to read and tough to keep going out there some days but it's very, very, very fun to, to learn what you can do yourself with your own personality. And then some of the other stuff like not time blowing calls, that's all stuff you learn along the way. Like it's, it's just part of getting into it. All that's the knowledge, the habitat, the dealing with game. It's, you learn it as you go. It's not a big deal to not know it when you go into it. So the facilities and settings. I'm lucky, like I said, I got I get to work at some of the nicest lodges out there. Um, I'm in one right now. You can see it's gorgeous behind me. Walston Lake Lodge, it's multi, multi-million dollar lodge. There's the lodges. You can see we've got our boat ramp there. The planes, they own two planes. They have 30 custom-made boats that are all, they're beautiful, gorgeous. You can check it out on their website. Gorgeous boats, 90 horse tiller motors, like top of the line gear. You can't ask for better gear. And we'll run 60 guests through there every four days for 18 groups. And you get to see that's the full camp. There's 60 staff and then you have 60, 60 clients there. It's, it can be a busy, hectic place, but very, very cool. Like there's lots going on, lots of plans. Like you're in float plans almost every other day. It could be every day going to different flyouts in the lake. The lake's ginormous. Um, but you're setting out there. It's gorgeous. You're in, land way up in the northeast of Saskatchewan it's rocky it's tundra it's all sorts of different mixtures of land and it's it's hard to beat it's so hard to beat um and then some of the 
other facilities are a little bit more, a little less rural, I guess. Um, you have this bird camp that I'm at here. We have a couple other ones that I uh, work at. You're just in the prairies a little bit more, but they're still gorgeous settings. I mean, where I'm at here is, feels like you're not too far from civilization, which you're not, but you get those Americans up here, they think they're in the middle of absolute nowhere. So, and then kind of having that setting like this, these lodges, it goes a long way for those people. It's one of those memories. Um, you go into any of these lodges that are very, very nice. And you remember that it's the food, the people you work with. Um, and that's what makes those memories for people. Um, let's see here. So daily used equipment. So it depends on the outfit you work for and the job you're doing on what you have to supply for yourself. So when I go up to Wallace and I don't have to supply a boat or anything like that, or planes, I bring lots of different lures, fishing tackle, that's my own choice. I can let guests use my stuff totally up to me, but they do have that kind of stuff supplied. Like there's rods there for the guests, all that stuff's there for the guests. You can literally show up and get in the boat and go guide. There's the odd thing you need, like your flay knife, those types of things, but nothing that you really need. Like even guiding birds here, I show up. I have my calls on my neck and some clothes and my boots. Like there's not too much more to it than that there's some outfits you might work for though like i have some buddies that works some deer camps and they supply all the blinds and their trail cameras quads trailers trucks but you do get paid usually a lot better since you are using all your gear but you get into a lot of the big stuff and you don't have to supply anything like when i guide cougar hunts i just show up and the sleds the quads the dogs the trucks the hound like it's all there you're just out there enjoying it and it's a lot of fun the reward this is probably the reason everyone that guides guides all my buddies that i guide with there's a lot of reward to it so fooling animals or fishing when you're fooling fish it's so tricky and it's so hard because there's so many days it doesn't happen you learn from the days that it doesn't work and the days you keep learning from those days that it doesn't work is where you get better and better and better. So those days when you're out there, they get, they keep getting better and less of those terrible days on the water or in the field. And just seeing people's reactions, like I've had some very young crews, like last year I had a very young crew in the fall, all about my age in the twenties, early twenties. And the way they reacted to one of our nights of bird hunting was <sighs> I, I was fired up and I, I've done it enough. I've seen a pile of birds, you know, being harvested and it's not that much for me anymore, but watching those guys get fired up, got me super fired up and I was losing it. Everyone else there was losing it. It was just an absolute blast. And it kind of sets you back and you remember you're like, this is why I do this. This is why I'm out here doing this job it's a lot of hard grinding hours. Like you're working and working and working day after day after day. There's no days off. It's two months straight getting up at three in the morning, going to bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And it's tough, but watching those birds do what you want them to do after those years of learning how to do it, it goes a long ways. Cause I can remember when I started guiding bird hunts, didn't know anything to now where the guys I've learned from were, talking back and forth about how how are we going to hunt this field how are we going to you know make fool these birds we got this weather conditions this is what's going to happen out there we have this many blinds we got to try to hide them there's a lot of a lot of a lot of tough times out there um trying to make everything come together and fool mother nature um but when that all comes together that's that's where a lot of the reward is i mean even you go fishing there's so many days you have those hot flat calm days and it's not good it's tough but you keep going out there and you figure it out you start to learn about you know what can i do here maybe these fish aren't in the shallows and you start sliding out deeper and you just keep learning to it talk to guys and you figure it out and 10 15 years down the line from now i i can go out there and i bet you i'll have a, a lot of confidence in when i was doing this you know for five years and there'll be a lot of reward from that and you can take everything you learn in this you you take for the rest of your life so when you're done guiding or if you ever you know stop 
all the fish fries you do for fishing and shore lunch, that's something you can take down the line with you and do with a family or friends. It's, there's a lot, a lot to be taken from it. And then the other reward too is seeing people go home happy at the end of their trip. It's tough. It can be very tough. You'll have those four days where it's terrible weather. They're, they didn't kill birds. They didn't catch fish. It happens. Keeping a smile on their face and having a lot of fun with them, sending them home off after their trip's over. is a, It's hard to learn how to do it, but once you learn it, it's very rewarding. Like I've spent, I've had some crews that come up from the States and then we usually do three to four day trips for our bird hunting and they booked a week and they've spent a pile of time with us now. But we've had lots of hunts where, especially on sandhill cranes, I don't know why it is, but we'll go out there and in the evenings, they just don't come. And we've kind of learned this over the years now that a lot of times in the evenings, they don't come. So we've started to hunt them in the mornings only. And the sandhill cranes, we've had a couple shoots there where we killed nothing, but I've never brought guys back happier in my entire life than when we shot a zero. We took a picture with the decoys and put one of our uh, scouters names on it, put like a cam and a zero, but then we realized we spelt camo because of C-A-M with an O on the end. So the boys lost it there and we had to move our zero to the bottom. And I've never seen anyone come back so happy, so enjoyed, like they were losing it. And there's still a lot of reward there when you can figure out how to make a bad hunt into a different way of being rewarded. So there's a lot to it. There's, it's kind of one of those things once you get out there, you, you learn it and you see how you can, take bad days to good days and still make it rewarding the challenge like i kind of said it's a lot of you're playing with mother nature and you're dealing with people who don't really do a lot of this hunting or fishing so trying to keep things going and rolling for them can be tough um i you're in a grind right you don't sleep much you're on day 50 guiding you're I mean, mentally you're, you're tired and you get a crew in sometimes and it's just a group, one of those personalities that it just doesn't mix with you, but you have to fight through it. It's so tough, but you have to fight through it and you just keep guys going. And it's no different from your first, first group you got to the last group you get. You got to keep those guys happy and still look like you're like you were on day one, act the same way. And it can be very tough, but you you can make it happen. It's, it's a grind, but it's rewarding and it's a challenge. Um, being away from home for a couple months, it's not bad when you're young. I don't find it as terrible. Like being up north for three months in the summertime, I like it up there. I'm with a bunch of my friends. You're fishing all summer, which is really cool. It's not as hot as when I'm down south here in the summer because I got to do that last summer since COVID and everything was shut down. The borders were shut down and it's hot down here. I'm not too much of a fan of it. So being up there is nice. Um, some of the other challenges, I mean, the weather, you're dealing with people and dangerous things. Your guns, lots of guns. You'll be sitting there guiding of eight guns. A lot happening there. There's a lot, a lot of shooting, a lot of, a lot of safety. That's one of my biggest things out there. I'll really grind it into guys. You have to, I mean, you don't have to be afraid to, show initiative like i'm young i go out there and guys are like well this when i first start out i'm 18 years old 19 years old these 45 50 year old guys are like you don't know anything you, i'm not listening to you and you kind of lean into them a little bit and like hey guys it's like when i call that shot to shoot those birds we do it if not like don't shoot until i say because you don't know what what's out there what's coming and you kind of learn that one too is it's a challenge to get people to ex, you know accept you as a young person that you don't they don't think you know anything but maybe you, you do um so that's a challenge but once guys get to know you they come back year after year after year they know who you are and that's the reason they come back is a lot of times people don't come back for the bird hunting or the fishing they come back for the person that you are and once they once they learn about you you learn about them it makes things a lot easier it's not so hard anymore they know what it's all about they know the fishing they know the hunting it's not too hard for them anymore um and then you break a lot of stuff. That's just, that's inevitable. I have one of my buddies I guide with and about every five minutes, I think his truck's broken or his trailer's broken, his quads, everything he has is broken. He'll be missing doors off stuff. It's just like 
not not everyone that guides is like that, but he's one of the guys that I just think about a lot when things are broken. <laughs> but you kind of learn how to fix stuff in the bush. When you're fishing, you'll things will break, you'll break props, other stuff like that. You're just learning how to fix it. I mean, that's another thing too. You just learn it as you go. Learn from the other guys around you and it it all it all makes sense down the down the road. So salary. This one's kind of a tough one for me. I had a tough one trying to figure this one out because it's every year can change. It depends if maybe this year I didn't guide bears or I didn't guide cougar hunts. So whatever you guide is kind of what is how you'll figure it out. If you do the whole run, like I'll do a nine month run, there's a lot of money to be made. Tips are an American and the way the whole dollar is, it's worth a lot more. So probably my best example to do would be fishing and guiding birds. I do them every year. Uh, the whole fishing thing, your daily wage. So at most of these fishing camps or hunting camps, you're getting paid by the day because they're over 12 hour days, or it could be a 15, 18 hour day. You just never know. You're just there to work. Um, you have your downtime, like at the fishing lodge, our normal day would be eight hours in the water and you have about an hour in the morning, getting ready an hour in the evening when you're off the water, getting things cleaned up and then you have supper and then it's all you, you can go do whatever you want, go hang out with the, your friends, whatever. Um, but it's all daily wage. So it can start from $110 to a day to 210, 220. It just depends on the lodge, depends on where you work, depends on your, you know, your years there. Every year you seem to keep going up, going up and going up. Uh, like the waterfowl camp, longer days, tougher work. Um, you get paid more as you learn, right? Like my years here now, I think I'm at, it's probably a three, $340, $350 a day. Like you get paid a lot more as, as you go and show it, show your initiative, show what you've learned when you're going out there and your boss who's been doing this for 10 years is just letting you do your thing because you know it and you've learned it. You're out there every day that shows a lot for them and they don't have any stress when your boss is like, okay, that's easy. Just you go do you. And I'm not worried about it, but depends on the amount of days you work for, for that. But that kind of gives you an idea of wages wise. Um, tips, tips are kind of what keeps a guy going out there. So when you're guiding fishing, my, your average group at, for Wallace and with the lodge or, or asked from the guests would be $800 American for one boat for your four days of fishing. So, I mean, you do 18 groups at eight, uh, $800, it adds up. And I've had lots of guys, like once you get there more and more and more, they're, you know, $1,500 tips or $1,200 tips. I've had, I have a couple of groups where it's, you know, $2,200 tips for that four days of fishing. And you get to know those guys, you keep them happy and <laughs> they'll give, they'll tip you. They have lots of money and they're willing to hand it out if they like you and they want to, you know, keep seeing you every year that's what keeps you going back too is when you're getting those kinds of tips for four days plus your daily wage it's like hard to leave that it's it makes you want to go back it drives you so that's kind of kind of a way to look at it there i mean the cougar hunts is a different one you're usually on a 10-day hunt and it's same thing getting paid by the day but your tips for big game i find are quite a bit different because you're with one guy and it depends on if they know how much to tip. A lot of guys don't. So letting guys, it's kind of a, one of those weird things because you're talking about money and it's coming out of someone else's pocket, but letting them know, you know, like this is kind of what something's worth or this is how this works. And eventually over time they figure out, you know, this is where I got to tip a little bit more. Or, and it, it kind of adds up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, Tips can be tips. It's it's a tough one to figure out and a tough one to go by, but keep guys happy and the tips will come. Um, educational requirements. Um, there's nothing you can nothing really like high school wise, like or college. I know in Alberta or BC they do depends on your provinces. There's different, you know college courses you can go through and you know learn about i believe it's bc that you can do uh guiding courses um for out here there's nothing you show up and you sign a little card and it says your guide and your guide it's easy as that uh cpr and first aid is really important you're dealing with a lot of older folks and 
it's dangerous. I mean, there's going to be hooks and hands. It's just, it happens. That's part of it. You're putting hooks and hands. Someone might have a heart attack. Like you have to be able to know what's going on out there and help somebody out. Cause it's a, using older crew. Um, other than that, there's not too much requirements. Maybe, I mean, your driver's license, boating license, depends on what you go to do, but there's nothing really too much required for it. So my journey, like I said, I, ever since I can remember, I've wanted to hunt. Born in Calgary, um, was there till I was about 10. And the old man moved out here and all I ever wanted to do was hunt and fish. Got to do lots of fishing out there, but not so much hunting because it was in Calgary, it was tough to get out of the city. But as soon as I was here, it was, that was it. That's all I could think about, all I ever wanted to do. And it's all I've, I've done since. I mean, I'd be sitting there for in a week of high school and it was the longest weeks of my life waiting for the weekend to come so I'd go hunting. It was the longest grinds ever, but <laughs> had to wait. And eventually I got out. Out of that, did a welding course and loved it. Really good at welding. And from there, I just kind of full-time guide. Like I was guiding while I was doing my welding course. I'd guide birds and or set up decoys in the morning. I'd get up at three or four and then I'd go to school uh, in Rosetown, the welding course there with, uh, oh, what the heck is that? Oh, I can't remember the name of the college, but, oh, Great Plains College. Um, did the Great Plains College welding course there. And we'd be done, you know, school at 4.30 and then I'd go back out there and help set up decoys, do that type of stuff, scout. And it was long, it was tough, but still doing what I loved. Did the welding, did the whole hunting thing while I was at school. Um, and then from that, just been guiding the waterfowl, fishing, deers, cougars, just been getting into, it. I do a lot of trapping in the winter time. I trap a lot of coyotes in the winter time. Like I just got done here with over 250 coyotes. So there's lots to do with the whole guiding, even just for yourself for hunting wise. Once you're done guiding, you have enough saved up cause you don't spend any money when you're guiding that you can go do what you want in the winter times and enjoy it. It's like, even for me hunting myself, you don't get a lot of time to hunt for yourself anymore. Once you start guiding, I find the odd day here and there and get out and hunt. And I've been lucky enough to harvest some big animals for myself. And I have a couple of buddies this year that didn't get to guide. And that's all they did the whole season. They've saved up enough money that they hunted their whole entire seasons. Like my one friend hunted elk all for two months and another buddy who hunted mule deer for two months, like got to do a lot of stuff that you don't usually get to do. And, kind of took advantage of it but other than that i'm going to keep guiding and keep loving it for years to come i think opportunities so i think the best way to you know for your opportunities to get into this hunting and guiding is i like to say who you know it's not all about who you know but it really helps so if you're really driven and you want to do it like i said i there's no fear north of rosetown and i started running into them um, they seen that I had that drive, that passion and they knew they're like, that's a kid that, that's going to guide for us probably one day. And they talked to me and I was, it felt like I got drafted into the NBA. I was like, yeah, here we go. This is the start of it. And once you get into it, you start, it's a small, small world it is anything else. Like you get into, let's say horse training, my girlfriend's a horse trainer small world there once you get into it everyone knows everyone and you see who the big people in it to who are the small people in it and you learn a lot of names you learn about different lodges different people are doing it like who's really good at it who's who needs people and from there you just keep growing and growing and if you want to go guide this or guide that you're going to meet those people that know that person or know how to get into it and have contact info and that's kind of going to lead your opportunities into that industry um other than that, just nothing too, too much for opportunities. That's probably going to be your ways to get into it and applying, I guess, too. I mean, there's lots of lodges every season. People are always, always need people for guiding birds or fishing. Like I started at one fishing lodge there, Hatchet Lake, um, just out of high school. And it was on the dock. I wanted to guide, but they didn't have guides, a guide position open. So I went and worked on the dock and got my foot in the door. And from there, that's how I got guiding. I learned a lot from it too. I learned all about the lake. I learned how the system worked there. So my next year there is like, Oh, I know what's going on. Like I'm 
one step ahead of everyone else here that's new. Like I know, I know what I need to do here. Um, life slash work balance. I think when you're a hunting fishing guy, that's your life. Like with that's all you want to do. That's all you're thinking about. Like me hunting and working, it doesn't really feel like a job. Uh, guiding everything I guide, it's not really a job. You're getting paid to do it, but it doesn't feel like it. But family life, um, life at home, like I said, you're gone for a long time. It's tough. I always say it's a younger person's sport or younger person's game, really, because you are gone so much. Like, I mean, having kids and a wife would be very difficult to do what you do. But further down the line, maybe you do this when you're young, learn a lot about it, and when you get to go out and hunt and fish and do it yourself, you already have that knowledge. You've learned so much already. But, um, and then your winners, I mean, I do guide cats a little bit there. Like, I do a little bit more part-time just because it's such a long grind where it's, you start in May and you go straight right till December. It's no days off in there. You might have this one day off to go home and load, reload your truck and go to the next camp. So it's, <clears throat> it's a lot of a grind, but you can save up, do whatever you want in the winter times. I, all my buddies, we, we hang out, we will go fish and go on trips in the winter. Like we're going up North to go lake trout fishing here in a couple of days. We'll be up there for two weeks just because we have the time and, it's what we do in the winter. We're, just, we're still hunting and fishing. And then lots of pictures here. I have some from Wallace and these are just some pike photos and a lake trout photo from, I think this is last season. Hundreds of these photos. I always dreamt about having these, you know, grip and grin photos of these big fish and you go out and do it and you have lots of them. They start to add up. Like I kind of look back at the little photos I have now and you're like, wow, I've done a lot. It's some, 23 years old and I have I have a lot to show from it and it's really really cool same thing there's some bird photos there cougar hunts they're giant cats it's that's a very cool it's hard to explain hunt you go out there and you do it it's it's so different from everything you're tracking a footstep that you've seen in the snow between all these other thousands of footsteps in the snow and this cat here in the middle we tracked that one for three days and it went over 35 kilometers before we caught up to him and figured out yeah he's right here so a lot of adventure a lot of going through different wild country and it's a heart pounding adrenaline like a lot of adrenaline going through you out there it's <laughs> hard to explain it's one of those things you gotta go out there and do and, and learn more bird hunts had some big bird hunts um lots of fun out there you're with your buddies it's usually a younger crew like me and buddy pulled into this one bear bait here and there's a little bear running up the tree, so I thought I'd chase after him. And there's always bears in that bait. Every time you went in there, there's bears get on your quad, all the place. Like a lot of fun. It's you kind of learn about the wildlife. People are like, oh, bears, and I was scared of those. I'm staying away. They're not that bad once you kind of learn about them. I have lots of videos and pictures walking up to bears, and they'll just kind of mind their own thing. They just want the food that you're dropping off there. <clears throat> Shore lunches, I mean, I've learned a lot about how to cook guiding you work at lots of lodges the food's unreal but you do shore lunches mainly fishing is the only time i ever have to do any cooking but you go out there and you cook a shore lunch and it's unreal it's one of those things you can take take with you for the rest of your life and go out there and make a shore lunch and everyone loves it everyone i brought out to do shore lunches or anything with it's like you've changed your life it's the greatest thing ever and it's just the whole rarity of it. it's not not many people have had that or got to do it so it's it's very very good and some of the more big game like bear hunts um doing some deer like deer photos there over the years you just they kind of stack up and it's one of those rewarding things you can look back at and then here's some of the lodges like uh the bottom left one here that's inside our lodge there at walston where all the uh, guests eat and hang out at the end of the day Top one is our Whitetail and Bear Lodge that I work with for Anthony Springer. And then this top right one's one of another one of our bird camps here at Prairie Sky. That's the one I spend my time at in the fall. Um, it's about 15 minutes from here. And then Walston Lake Lodge there, it's got the boats. You can see those nice custom-made boats. Like they're gorgeous. The float plane's custom, custom painted. It's it's super cool to be a part of those lodges and work for those places. Questions and answers. Oh, 
done. Uh, I don't know, Renette, do you, Laura, do you guys have any questions? Well, you can definitely see the passion in Spencer's, um, you know, in, in his slides and in the way he describes things. So good for you for finding that, uh, you know, that, that, like you said, that dream so early in your career. That's awesome. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you chase that dream and you chase what you love. Like one of my good friends said it to me and I'll never forget it. He said, do what you love and the money will come. And I always, I always think about that one all the time because it's like, I never really thought, you know, how are you going to make money hunting or fishing? And it's like, he's literally, he's like, do what you love and the money will come. And that's it. You kind of find it and you realize, hey, I can do this. And there it is. It's, you can make money off of doing what you actually love to do. Yeah. How did the, um, I know that Americans really love to support all the, the things that are happening in our northern parts of the province. How did that affect uh, with COVID this year? Was there a, Obviously, it was getting in Americans now, right? No, like borders shut down, and I didn't get to guide bear hunts, fishing. We still did birds, we did Canadian residents, and then other than that, like my summer, it was you're kind of stuck in a hard spot there. Like, I went luckily, I knew some farmers around here, and I went seeding, worked for them for the summer. And then once the fall came, I got to go go guide birds. I did some cougar hunts I was Canadian residents again, and then did my trapping this winter. But it is a lot different. Like, you're not making the money that you do with Americans because that dollar is a lot different. You can charge more. They don't care. They're Americans, they have lots of money. <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't care. I'll come up and pay. So with the Canadians, you have to definitely change your rates. You're less money. You're like, you're breaking things. So it still costs money. You're not quite making what you usually do. I assume, yeah, I assume that the Americans that are coming here, the ones that are coming probably would have the money. You know, they wouldn't come this far, you know, just on a whim. They, they, they're coming. Yeah. Whereas the Canadians, you might have some more just average guys that are like you and I that are looking for, you know, somebody to guide them. It's a little different, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I, Hi, Spencer. Uh, Jeff Cameron here. Um, geez, I don't think I've been this excited since my uh, first date with this gal who is now my wife. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. If I, if I come back and another, you know, pass on, and you're supposed to be able to come back hopefully i hope i can be a guide just like yourself um truly excited because i know a lot of kids that uh in our area that uh, love to hunt and love to fish and if they'd have known of something like this i just don't think they really ever thought of something like this and you you say there's lots of opportunities um yeah so i'm just excited to uh, spread the word uh, it was a wonderful presentation i just want to thank you so much uh, no thank you I've been an avid uh, hunter and fisherman all my life. I, I just bought a new 6.5 Creedmoor uh, yep. Kimber, Kimber from, and uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, no, uh, excellent. I just, I was in awe and I'm just kind of feel like, uh, yeah, it's I got goosebumps. It was just <laughs> right up my alley. I didn't do it. I, I always look back at times. I'm like, whoa, like I've dreamt of doing this and here I am doing it like it's kind of one of those things like guiding cougars I was like oh that'd be a cool hunt to do and it's like well I can't afford it so I'm just gonna go guide it and I get to do a bunch of it <laughs> you get to do it make money while you're doing it yeah I, I also think another thing too like, like you said it's a small world out there and it, it sounds like you've really done a great job of tapping into you know those other people in the industry to help you you know get to where you've got to like maybe getting to know them and then working for them and yeah them. like with with guiding and everything, I think one of the biggest things that drives me that I like to hear is, oh, that guy works hard. And when people hear that, it's kind of one of those set done deals. It's like he'll listen and he works hard. And, it's, and that drives me quite a bit. It's from one outfitter to another outfitter. So, yeah, he worked, that, that kid works hard. You'll, you'll like him. He's, he's got that drive. So I've always worked hard and always done what I've loved. And people really enjoy that and see that. And they're like, well, I need you here. And that's where – you keep keep or you keep clients coming back and everybody keeps stays happy so business is run and it's yeah, so. there's a lot there yeah. the other thing i would say is that mental health is such an issue today and they say a lot of it's because people are on so much screen time phones this and that and there's just not that human element out there you have this opportunity to meet so many people and talk to so many people that for your mental health wise it's just has to be so wonderful to meet so many different characters and all of the things you do in the fresh air, the animals. Yeah. Stuff. 
unbelievable. I just can't wait to go and share this with some students. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Spencer. I won't take any well. of your time, but uh, wow. Great job. Take care. Spencer, I've got a question for you with, uh, like you said, you're away a lot, a lot. and yep. this province has uh, got a wealth of resources when it comes to, you know, land and, and animals, and I just think of your local area uh, guiding fishing. You've got Lake Diefenbaker there, which is incredible, and a lot of people I know go out there and they don't even catch anything because they don't know where to go and how to do it. So. You know, when you start having a family and stuff, being away gets to be a little bit tough. But there's probably those opportunities where you could, you could set up your own guiding and 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 uh, you know, just in your local area too, right? Oh, absolutely. Like I know some guys who have uh, who guide on Diefenbaker, have the rights out there, and absolutely, you could still stay around home and do that. Absolutely, you're at the lake all summer, and you could have your family there all summer and still guide on that lake. And that's one of the things too, like going up to Walston, learning about how to actually fish. I come back to Diefenbaker, like where I fished as a kid and it was tough or you didn't know how to fish. And now you go out on that lake and I'm like, ah, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to crush them. Like, I'm going to go catch some fish today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Gord's, yeah. Gord's got a good point. Yeah. You can, it's pretty transferable to all kinds of locations. I mean, I know you like the, the, the North country, but it's not like you have to do that forever either. If it doesn't no, like the North is, it's, really where the money is at it's one of those high-end lodges and it's just cool to be up there the fishing's really good the fish are big that's what drives the guy right that's what you want to see like you go to some small puddles and like i don't want to go catch small fish i want to go chase these big fish because they're tough to catch and they're rare it's not something you see every day so it's really cool that way and you can still come back down home and go out fishing there and guide there and you know there's big fish in there you're gonna learn how to catch them and keep working, keep you going working lots of locations but... yeah. um i don't have any other questions or do you have any more? Uh, no, no, that was very good. Uh, I love the way you emphasize work ethic and that word of mouth, uh, Spencer. That that's really key for kids to understand. Is yeah, you have to have a work ethic. You have to work at it, and you know you you kept it to your passion. Uh, yeah, and you kept it uh, alive. A lot of people, when they get into their passion areas, uh, they don't have time to do what they want, which is their passion. And you've uh, you've done a great job. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. I think I'll, I'll end it there, Spencer, so I'll turn the recording off.